the vast remoteness of the Arctic is not really appreciated by a lot of Canadians. No one really understands the lack of support that there is here, regardless of if we are operating in ice or not. Operating a vessel in this type of environment, regardless if there's ice or not, is a challenge for our Navy, and that's one of the things that I'm here to learn right now. Commander uh, Corey Gleason of uh, HMCS Harry DeWolf. I'm currently uh, out at sea on board uh, Louis Saint Laurent. We left Kudluktuk on the 5th of October. We made our way to Cambridge Bay to pick up another scientist as we make our way further north. And this is really all about building more knowledge about the Arctic. I've been coming up to the Arctic since about 2009 and I realized that we need to build some general knowledge and experience and expertise in, uh, in operating in ice. So I put together a two-year program for the next captains that are coming up to uh, take over and take command of the next ships that are going to be coming online. Just north of Icebreaker Channel, making our way northbound uh, through uh, Victoria Strait, en route for uh, Bellet Strait. Later on in the day, we're going to see some multi-year and some first-year ice. That's going to stop the ship, literally, in its tracks, and then we get the real great opportunity to see the power of the ship and really fight through some of the thicker ice. You can hear the ice alongside the ship, and you feel the shudder of the ship, and, and it's for someone that's not experienced that, really, it's, a, it's an unnerving feeling. You interact with the, with the ice with the ship using speed uh, and power and how speed doesn't necessarily equal speed, it actually equals power. So when the ship gets stopped, we'll put the thrusters full speed ahead, never really achieving full speed, probably only achieving four or five knots, to push ourselves up against the ice, ride on it a little bit, and really search out the path of least resistance and make our way through. to enter Ballast Strait. This is by far the most uh, tricky part of the trip because of the current in there, multi-year ice. The experiences here, we've seen a little bit of everything. We came up on a very large ice flow and the commanding officer, Captain Wayne Duffett, gave me the opportunity to drive his ship. Um, what we have seen here is the way that the ship operates in thick ice like that is the captain will slow the ship as he's approaching the ice and then as he gets close to that thick ice he'll apply more power, he'll put on more speed. The ship itself won't pick up a lot of speed but it will apply that power as the ship moves into the ice and what actually happens is the ship will ride up onto the ice and then the ice knife which is a piece that sticks out from underneath the main portion of the hull will cut through that ice and the ship's weight will sink down and break that ice open and find sort of those natural weak points in that ice flow and that'll allow the ship then to find the, the safest way to proceed through. Once the ship settles and doesn't move ahead again, then the captain backs up and does that repeatedly until he can make his way through that flow. It has to be done with caution uh, and with patience to make sure that the ship can safely proceed through that ice. That ice flow uh, served to be uh, uh, terrific for uh, training Commander Tessier and the nuances between multi-year ice and first-year ice. She did a terrific job today and I, my hat's off to her. Well, let's hope that's the last one of those that we see on this oh, trip. Oh yeah, we had enough of that. 
sometimes. You get a shudder throughout the ship. It's an unnerving feeling if you've never experienced it before. Uh, it's been a little nerve-wracking driving a ship aground on purpose, which is something I'm not used to doing, uh, and learning just how the Arctic conditions here affect the ship and how we're going to be looking at operating our ships when we come up here in the future. We're on our way to uh, Pond Inlet, and of course, the Canadian Coast Guard provides ice breaking service to the industry. And there's two industry ships that are coming up from uh, Europe. Louis Saint Laurent, the flagship of the Canadian Coast Guard, will be providing uh, ice services to those ships that will be coming in to uh, either pick up or deliver supplies to the hamlet in Pond Inlet. There are five main engines, main generators, close to around 7,000 horsepower each. We can produce more horsepower than we can use. There's uh, three independent systems down there, a, a drive for each motor, and then start up one and start up three. You know, we choose our number of engines depending on the power versus efficiency. Yeah, thermal imaging has, has become more popular in the last few years. Uh, we went through all our switchboards, all of our equipment, and installed but how long, windows how long do you need? so we could do hot and better so maintenance, and get scanning, some scanning, all like of our equipment more clear. Uh, the bubbler system is uh, essentially a couple of compressors that pushes air out through holes in the side of the ship and those air bubbles provide lubrication for the side of the ship and keep uh, sort of a wall between the ship and the ice that's around it and that makes uh, proceeding through ice a lot easier than uh, if we didn't have the bubbler system at all. The more snow you have on here, when it picks up, the snow will be changing to the hull. So right now, it's, the bubbler is going to help us a lot. Throughout our passage, we you know, frankly, I had to slow down sometimes to three and four knots just to get a better That's look. Yeah, at night time, that became really difficult. We were using big searchlights to uh, discern whether or not we were looking at uh, some first-year ice or some big, thick, multi-year ice that we really wanted to uh, work to avoid. Previous explorers that came here when things were, uh, you know, wooden ships, uh, they would all have made the attempt to make passage for the Northwest Passage. They would think that there was only one way through, which in reality, there's about seven ways through. Certainly Harriet Wolf will be able to exploit uh, many of those passages, uh, depending on the mission that we need to do and the, the hamlets we need to visit. We are here in uh, Eclipse Sound, just off of Pond Inlet in Nunavut. The experiences here, we've seen uh, a little bit of everything. It's been a really uh, interesting week. So I'm here with my peer, Commander Corey Gleason, who is the commanding officer of the first Arctic and Offshore Patrol vessel. And uh, Corey has had a number of um, trips here to the Arctic already. And I've been drawing again on his experience and seeing come to fruition now on this trip some of the things that he's experienced in the past. This is just uh, really um, a part of a, a larger program that uh, I've put together uh, throughout the years. Essentially what it really is is just operating on the shoulders of a navigable season which is the most difficult times to operate up in the north. We'll follow on with that with an academic program. We'll put an advanced uh, navigation course and a basic navigation course together for the future captains and navigators to prepare us to operate in the north throughout the whole of the navigable season. Really that's what it's all about isn't it? Yeah. Trusting your guys on watch, trusting the system to do what it needs to do. Those little lessons that he's been passing on to me over the past several months, I'm seeing them firsthand and understanding the application of, uh, of some of those processes that we've talked about. And uh, between him and then the cooperation that we have with the Canadian Coast Guard and, and the, the captains of the vessels that I've been embarked in, um, it's been a, a really excellent relationship and I'm looking forward to being able to take advantage of more of this. As I was standing there watching us go through, in my brain I'm yeah. thinking, you know, watching the current go through, watching the ice move, um, and knowing now that, you know, I've, I've already had a look at it before I come up here for the first time, I know what to expect. And I can prepare the crew for it in advance, and that's, that's one of the big things. I have learned a lot from you, and um, what I have seen out here, and how this is going to contribute to my first experiences when I come into the Arctic has been invaluable, so thank you.